Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Neil Beach. I'm the principal of Gainesville High School and uh, happy to be here. We just have a few people still joining our webinar, so um, we'll go slow over the next few minutes and then we'll, uh, we'll get going more rapidly over time. Um, so this is uh, an interesting session for us in that uh, I'm sure a lot of our community members are here just to learn more about the school. It's a fairly unique setting um, and that the school obviously is, is new and uh, to be introduced to the community uh, for the first time. So if, uh, if parents are here from families who are zoned to Gainesville High School, welcome, happy here. I'm gonna share a little bit about the school and some of the planning efforts that we are going through at the minute and uh, what we hope to accomplish when the school opens next summer. If you are a family that is not zoned to Gainesville High School, but you wanna know more about the specialty programs and the transfer process, then we'll certainly go over that too. So um, either way, we've got uh, close to 200 families in the webinar and uh, happy to have everybody in the room with us. I'll say thank you to Mrs. Cunningham for being here, providing uh, sign language interpretation and uh, a reminder to um, all of our families, if, if you do have chat questions, we're not gonna be able to keep up with all of them. Uh, we'll try and answer questions thematically, um, but please direct them to the co-host from today, Andrew Barton. Uh, he'll moderate the chat so that I, uh, I don't have to multitask. Those of you who know me know that that doesn't go well. So um, without any further ado, um, I'll introduce myself a little bit professionally. Again, my name is Neil Beach. I'm the principal at Gainesville High School. I have been the principal since July. And uh, prior to coming to Gainesville High School, I was a science teacher at Brentsville High School for a number of years. And um, so just about every level of biology um, at Brentsville High School and the, the Cambridge program. I was the Cambridge program coordinator for a short period of time before moving to Osborne Park High School as a, an assistant principal. And then I've spent the last 10 years as the principal of Osborne Park High School before moving over to, to Gainesville. Obviously uh, um, a very um, intriguing opportunity to open a new school. Um, it's been exciting so far, I've learned a lot um, we're still going through a lot of planning uh, decisions to do with uh, furniture, technology, outdoor equipment, and um, spending a decent amount of time coming up with ideas to support the specialty program that I'll be talking about more tonight, the Pathways to Global Citizenship program. So this is an exciting time for me. Um, it's an exciting time for the team members that, that have um, already come on board uh, at Gainesville High School and uh, hopefully the same for the community. Um, one of my goals for this school is truly for it to become part of the fabric of our community. Um, geographically, a lot of our students will live very close to the school. It's close to a lot of local businesses and uh, I'm really excited by the opportunity for us to be a community school. Um, serving every one of our students to the best of our ability, but really connecting um, deeply with the roots that we have in Gainesville. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we'll get started with the presentation this evening. So, here we go. Okay, so welcome to the Gainesville High School Pathways to Global Citizenship Program. A little bit about the school. Um, that's a, an image of the school taken last week. So you can see the school is well under construction. Uh, the exterior of the building is, uh, is close to being finished. The grounds are well underway. And um, you can see the stadium is, um, is being built, the turf fields are installed, and you can see the large practice field in the background. And Gainesville High School is going to be the home of the Cardinals. So our logo is being developed and the font is being developed. Um, 
soon to be finished and we'll be able to start using the Cardinal mascot for all sorts of activities as the school opens. My goals and an agenda for this evening, obviously to introduce the school, the construction process, some of the programs that we have in, on offer, answer some questions regarding activities and course offerings. I would imagine that uh, many of our parents and students want to know what's gonna be offered in a brand new school without a, a senior class. So we'll, we'll answer what we can while recognizing that there are still decisions to be made. We'll talk a little bit about base school or students who are assigned to Gainesville High School versus students who wish to transfer to the school. Um, obviously delve into the Pathways program. A few examples of course sequences that students may select in the program. And then we'll share some areas where locations where we'll store information for future reference. And at this time, um, parents and students, if you haven't opened the chat feature, please do so. Uh, we have dropped and will continue to drop a little bit of information into the chat box um, that you'll be able to retrieve a brochure, our website link, and uh, an overview of the program. So there's the building, that's the ground floor. And um, I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on this, but it's, it's a great opportunity to share some of the design features of the building. So the footprint is very similar to that of Patriot High School and, and Colgan High School. Uh, some of the, the features that stand out, this on the left-hand side of the building is the academic wing. Uh, so language arts and social studies, family consumer science and career and technical education are housed in this side of the building. We've got our art department here, adjacent to one of two courtyards. There's a courtyard here, and a courtyard over here. Our library media center um, here in green is right next to one of the courtyards and opens up into the courtyard also. Um, over on this side of the building, we do have an outdoor amphitheater that's being built. So I anticipate using that for coffee nights, award ceremonies, uh, one act plays, those kinds of things. We have a black box theater, a true black box theater over here, a separate choral um, orchestra and band space. And then a large auditorium with two lecture areas at the back with retractable seating. So uh, lots of modern features, uh, two open cafeterias here and here that serve as lobby areas for the gym and for the auditorium. So uh, lots of really interesting design features, lots of natural light, lots of space, uh, large classrooms, and uh, obviously architecturally designed to support student learning as best we can. On the second floor of the building, again, we've got the academic wing over here with our science labs and our math department. Over here, we've got world languages, and an interesting feature here is our extended learning space, a wide open space where we'll have comfortable furniture and uh, collaborative um, tables for students to break out of their traditional classrooms to research, present, and share ideas. Here are some more photos, obviously aerial view of the building. Uh, top right is uh, the, the current state of our Extended learning space. Um, it's coming along nicely. One of our courtyards in the bottom right. The outdoor theater. Um, on the left, the uh, the auditorium with the, the pit wall already under construction. And then that's the, the practice facility um, in our grounds behind the stadium in the bottom right. So again, it's going to be an outstanding facility in which to work and learn. Um, something I'm excited to, to see everything come together and open next summer. Okay, school data. One of the questions that I've had frequently is how big is the school? Well, this, the school's built for just under 2,600 students. That's about a 25% increase in capacity over the Colgan High School and Patriot High School models. Today, we're projected to um, open next year with um, about 1,650 students. Um, that that number is a little bit flexible because our junior class will have a one-time choice to either stay at the schools they're presently attending, uh, predominantly Unity, Reed, Battlefield, and Patriot High Schools, 
or move over to Gainesville High School. Um, we have a little bit of flexibility in our freshman and sophomore classes, depending on how many transfer students we accept into the, the Pathways program. So in the region of 1,650 students in our first year, about 2,300 students in our second year, and then uh, by the time we hit our fourth year, um, our planning office has projected that we'll be right around 2,600 students. Um, this year, we anticipate accepting in the region of 30 to 50 students as transfer students into our ninth grade and about the same amount, same number into our 10th grade cohort. The goal being to avoid um, overpopulating grade levels so that by the time we have four grade levels in the school, we're not over capacity. So we want to make sure that uh, Gainesville High School as a community school um, serves its community uh, without having um, dozens of trailers out the back of the building in a couple of years time. So um, I'd love for more students to be able to attend Gainesville High School, but we're, we're going to limit transfer enrollment initially. From a staffing perspective, that means we'll need somewhere in the region of 100 teachers in our first year of operation, and then we'll grow by about 20 to 25 teachers a year until we hit that capacity of close to 2,600. Priorities. So there's um, version 1.0 of our school crest. It's going to change probably one more time before we finalize it and publish it. We've had a group of students help us design this crest, but at the bottom of it, 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 uh, it reads lead, learn, care, and create. And uh, we're going to use those four areas of focus as we make decisions, as we challenge students, as we connect with our community. We want to care about our community, care about each other. We want to be creative, innovative, um, on the vanguard of a lot of things educationally and in terms of student learning. Obviously, learning is a, a, a core priority for the school. We want every student to learn to a high level and, ex, uh, and experience academic rigor. And we want to develop skills that have enduring properties, skills that students will use outside and after high school. So leadership becomes an important part of who we are. The words surrounding that um, really support those four core tenants. We, we want to be inclusive. We want every student to have an opportunity uh, to maximize um, their potential, to, to delve into areas of interest in the curriculum. Um, academic rigor is going to be an important part of, of what we offer to our community. We're going to make decisions that really support students and try to make decisions that consider the student's perspective first. I want our high school to be vibrant. I want it to be a whole high school experience for our students. So clubs and activities, um, community events, Again, things that get students involved outside of a regular classroom are going to be an important part of what we do. We'll talk a little bit about that later in the evening. Um, now more than ever, being connected is, is a way of life, and uh, we want our students to be responsible users of technology. But we do want our students to, to be connected, be connected to important information, um, to each other, to the community. We want uh, students to be innovative in terms of their ideas, their thinking, the approach to problem solving, and again, skills focus. Skills like writing, presentation, uh, synthesis of ideas, analysis, creativity, compassion, um, things that students can develop as they, they mature and travel through high school, things that will benefit them post high school. Technology, um, it's a brand new school and every, classroom at, the, at, a, at a minimum will have a 75 inch uh, touch panel display. Uh, some of our classrooms will have a, a slightly larger display if the room's larger or there is a need for it, such as a, an orchestra room or a career and technical education room. Um, we're really working to put tools in our teachers' hands that allow them and then their students to be mobile learners. So our teachers will have laptops um, or tablets uh, a mobile teaching lectern and, and a wireless bridge to the panel display in their classroom. Um, so teachers aren't tethered to a desk to be able to connect and, and share content. Uh, again, assuming we're, we're in person and physically in classrooms in the near future. 
our lab spaces, our computer lab spaces will have additional technology where increased processing capacity is needed for Adobe, um, Revit, um, Autodesk type uh, softwares, journalism software. Um, so we will have some computer labs, but obviously right now our students will likely arrive to Gainesville High School carrying their own Prince William County Schools iPads. So the need for a traditional computer lab is diminished. And that leads to the next bullet. We, we have multiple spaces in our school, uh, the extended learning space, the library media center, the cafeteria spaces, and then some of our computer labs will be intended for collaboration more than simply sitting at a workstation um, to plug into a, a desktop. The, the, the furniture choices, the way the spaces have been designed are intended for students to use one-to-one -one devices to, to create, um, to collaborate, innovate, research, present, so on and so forth. I do anticipate Canvas continuing to be part of the platform that we use for instruction. Um, there, there are certainly some very strong features and especially if we're in a one-to-one -one environment, face-to-face -face still is a relevant tool. So I see that as uh, a tool that we'll be using into the future. Athletics and activities. Um, as I said earlier, that is our stadium field. It's, it's been installed, the goalposts are up, we're waiting for the logo to be stitched into the center circle. Uh, and then the track will be installed probably in the near future. Um, from an athletic perspective, we are planning to offer all sports at every level. The exception being football, in which case we'll offer a, a JV program for our first year and that will become a full varsity program in our second year, so the 2022-23 year, where we actually have a full junior and, and have uh, students in a senior class. But otherwise, uh, we will have all um, high school athletics offered that, um, that, that we can as we open. In terms of clubs and activities, we're, we're gonna build as many clubs and activities as we reasonably can in our first year. And that's going to be predicated by the interest and, and energy of our student body, as well as the um, desire and capacity of our instructional staff to sponsor and support those, um, those initiatives. Um, priorities initially will be robotics, student council, obviously. Um, I want to get a gaming club up and running, International Heritage Society, and No Place for Hate. Um, but that's a small selection of what I predict being a much larger selection of clubs and activities in our first year. We're going to need a lot of parent support. So parents, if you want to get involved, uh, we will be sending further surveys out later in the year, asking for areas of interest and um, organizations that you'd like to be involved in, from boosters to PTSO, guest lecturing, um, principals advisory council, um, it, it takes a village and um, the, the, more, the more often we see parents in our school, the more likely we are to build a productive partnership with our families. So um, this is our school and uh, hopefully all of our parents and students treat it as such. Course offerings. Um, we are working on building the course offering list for our ninth and 10th grade students. We will begin to push those course offerings to the schools that students will come from as they attend Gainesville next year. So middle, feeder middle schools and then high schools that will send students to us will receive a list of course offerings um, late December into early January. When we hit February, each of the students who are zoned or transferring to Gainesville High School will have a chance to work with the counselor in the, advice, the advisement process to select courses for um, the 21-22 school year. And to go full circle, we anticipate in ninth and 10th grade, pretty much a normal or full selection of coursework. So obviously the math, science, social studies, language arts courses required for graduation, there'll be a full selection of courses. I anticipate in fine and performing arts, um, career and technical education, business, family, consumer science, um, a full selection of courses that students can drop into in ninth and 10th grades. In 11th grade, because it's a smaller class and um, hiring becomes a little bit more difficult, 
if we have to hire a teacher with a specialized skill set, um, but, but maybe only has half of a full teaching load, um, we may have to be a little bit more careful in terms of the coursework that we offer. The coursework that we do offer will very much be driven by student interest. So we'll open up probably more courses to 11th, grade, 11th graders than we'll actually run. And then we'll try to offer the courses to our 11th grade students where there is um, the highest um, level of interest. From an advanced placement perspective, I fully anticipate a, a selection of AP courses still to be offered. AP US history being an example, uh, probably a advanced placement biology, maybe chemistry, maybe physics, um, maybe one or the other in chemistry or physics. Um, I'd anticipate advanced placement economics being offered. Um, we will work to make sure that calculus is offered if uh, enough students um, are at that level and interested in taking the course. And if there is an area of the curriculum where we only have a small number of students um, who are at the level to drop into AP or advanced coursework and have an interest in it, we will likely use the Virginia, uh, the virtual Virginia platform for some additional coursework to ensure those students still have access to advanced coursework. From another elective perspective, um, I think there'll be a decent selection of theatre, um, music courses, business, family consumer science for our 11th grade. It just may not be the full selection that we would have the following school year. Um, from a hiring and staffing perspective, obviously we'll be hiring staff to try to fulfill the needs of our students. So where possible, we'll hire staff to offer a full performing arts uh, curriculum. Building trades, we will probably hire a building trades teacher in a year's time so that as students go into their 11th and 12th grade year, they can complete the full two course sequence. Um, and then adv advanced math and science, we're gonna look at hiring teachers who can teach multiple levels of math and a couple of different science courses to try and um, ensure that we have options for all of our students, but, but including our 11th grade class. Scheduling, we've, we've talked about students will meet with a counselor um, um, early in the new year and uh, probably around February time. Um, every ninth and 10th grade student at Gainesville High School will be asked to choose a pathway or a concentration and work towards a, a pathway completion. We're a school with a pathway to global citizenship. So we'd like for every single student in the building to be part of that program. We believe in inclusivity, and uh, this is one way that we want to give students a, a chance to delve into an area of the curriculum that's of interest to them, that challenges them, that uh, students may wish to pursue post-secondary education. Um, so we'd like every ninth and 10th grade student in, in, in collaboration with their school counselor to select a pathway of courses that, that is of interest to them. Not that it can't change, not that students' interests uh, may, not, may not meander through high school, um, but we really want students to explore areas of interest as they, as they challenge themselves. It's a little bit harder in the 11th grade because students are gonna have a more, more difficult time completing a pathway between their junior and senior year. But if students really wanna explore a pathway that they could complete, then our counselors will be ready to do so and, and have those conversations with our junior class, our 11th graders. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a standard expectation for the, for the 11th grade class because of the um, grade level at which they begin studying at Gainesville High School. Okay, base school versus transfer. Base school students are students that are uh, zoned um, to Gainesville High School. And right now, as I said, we'll, we'll have in the region of 1,600 students zoned um, to Gainesville High School. And um, students who are zoned to other high schools, um, Patriot, Unity Reed, or any other high school in Prince William County can apply to attend Gainesville High School through one of our transfer programs. Um, right now, there are three pathways that students can apply to to be eligible as a transfer student. One of them is the pure math program or pathway. 
Um, one of them is the biomedical science pathway, and one is the engineering design, engineering design and construction pathway. And I'll talk more about those in a moment. But here are the schools from which students can transfer to Gainesville High School and the programs that those transfers would allow uh, students to transfer into. So math, the math pathway allows students to transfer from Battlefield, Patriot, Brentsville, and Unity Reed. The biomedical science program allows students to transfer from Battlefield, Patriot, Brentsville, and again, Unity Reed. And engineering design and construction from Battlefield, Unity Reed, and Osborne Park High School. That might seem like a strange selection of schools. They're generally schools that are on the western side of the school system, but also uh, drawing from schools that don't have other uh, programs that could fill the same academic um, space. So, for example, Patriot High School has a building trades program. Um, students would not transfer from Patriot High School to Gainesville High School to drop into the engineering design and construction program because part of that pathway involves building trades. So um, students could, however, transfer for biomedical science or math from Patriot High School to, to join those pathways. Okay, program features. Um, the pathways program is, um, it's a big idea. It's, um, it's unique in that it, it's intended to be inclusive. It's intended for every student to have a pathway and a place in the curriculum that's of interest to them. And, and therefore it's, it's much bigger than any other program that I've been involved in in Prince William County Schools. Um, so here's our way of trying to keep it simple. To complete a program or a pathway, students simply need to finish, successfully complete four courses within the concentration. Students have some choices to the classes that they select within a concentration. But by the time they graduate, we want students to complete four courses in a concentration. Um, students who select a pathway that has coursework within a normal graduation sequence, math, world language, history, and po political science or science, we do ask that those students select six courses to complete a pathway. So two courses in addition to the normal graduation sequence. And we're asking that students study at the advanced placement level in at least two classes in those sequences. Students can um, earn a pathway completion with distinction. So think of a university degree with honors. So this would be a pathway completion with distinction. And students can do that either by completing the, the advanced placement capstone seminar class, or they can de design develop their own extended learning experience. So an experience outside of a traditional classroom setting um, where a student has an authentic learning experience um, and, and then demonstrates their learning somehow during the school year. That could be a student who um, wants to rehearse and perform a recital with feedback. It could be a student who wants to shadow an orthopedic surgeon and apply what they've learned back to a science class. It could be a student um, working on a site with a civil engineering company or doing a study and uh, developing an algorithm to calculate the cost savings of um, renewable energy sources. So it really is intended for students to find an area of interest um, where they can really um, pursue a passion, uh, pursue an area of expertise that the student wants to develop further and then demonstrate that they've completed that experience that they, they've designed for themselves. Um, so either of those two um, outcomes would allow students to earn a pathway with distinction. And um, we do ask that students, um, in addition to that, complete 40 hours of either leadership or community service in an area of global significance. So get involved in the community, demonstrate leadership within our school or community, and try to tie it to, to the idea of, of global citizenship. Um, that's 10 hours a year in essence that we would ask students to get involved in. And uh, we'll certainly support students through um, advisement and, and offering opportunities to complete those, um, those additional um, leadership and community service projects, as well as the extended learning and capstone coursework. 
Okay, so here are our pathways. We've got five houses. The gray uh, banners show the houses under which um, students will select a pathway of interest. And then in the pink, um, in the pink rows, we've got the multiple pathways that students can select. So language and culture is a house. Writing and communication is a pathway that students may choose to study underneath. Fine performing arts is a pathway. World languages and culture is a pathway and so on and so forth. And all of these pathways and houses are, um, are listed like this in the brochure that we've dropped in the chat feature. Okay, sorry, I've just been corrected. It'll be available on our website and we will share the web URL, um, but all of this information is accessible on the website. Okay, so let's look at a pathway. This is the uh, language and culture pathway. And what I will stress is these are suggested course options that students may take. And students can combine different um, courses from within a pathway. Over time, we may add to these lists. We may remove courses from these lists and students can always self-advocate and say, I believe this course should be part of my pathway and here's why. So we're not, uh, we're not, absolutely bound to these courses, but this is a great starting point for us to help students develop their pathway. So in writing and communication, I may enjoy um, fiction and I may drop into a creative writing class in, in ninth grade, creative writing two in 10th grade, and then I, I may change interest and, and want to get involved in um, research, technical writing. So I, I might drop into the AP seminar class as an 11th grader and um, then drop into the AP research class as a senior or develop an interest in, in multicultural literature as a 12th grader. But there's something for many students with an interest in writing and communication, be it journalism, be it creative writing or speech, um, to, to meander through this pathway. And two students sat next to each other in the same house with the same pathway may still take a slightly different um, selection of coursework through their four years of high school. And we want students to have that choice. Students who are identified as gifted learners, um, we've, we will offer GEMS 11 and 12, and, and those courses could be part of the pathway um, where writing and communication are, are heavily involved in um, elements of the GEMS curriculum. Fine and performing arts, the, the same applies. A student could start off with a, a very um, clear interest in theatre uh, or theatre production for ninth and 10th grade, but um, decide that they'd rather be in the band and, and perform in a pit orchestra um, or, uh, or band during the musical season um, in 11th and 12th grade. World languages um, obviously is fairly, a little bit more self-explanatory and students would study multiple levels of a world language. Um, today, the world languages that um, are scheduled to be offered will be Spanish and French. Um, we're exploring the opportunity to offer American Sign Language as an additional language to our students. Um, but as students get into 11th and 12th grade, we're interested in layering culture over the study of language and students could study human geography, um, do ethnographic studies through an AP seminar class or in their 12th grade year study multicultural literature and, and global perspectives that, that come from that. So that, that gives you an overview of how the pathways could um, be tailored to suit the needs and interests of a student um, in those areas. If I drop down to the next house, uh, engineering, math, and automation. You can see that for engineering, design, and construction, the starting point right now, as we've um, dreamed up these ideas, is for students to begin their coursework in Intro to Engineering Design. That's a Project Lead the Way course in ninth grade. It's a great survey course to technical drawing, engineering principles, um, design, and that will allow students to then um, follow differing pathways as they get into uh, uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th. It could be that students continue in Project Lead the Way coursework through principles of engineering, civil engineering, and, and SIM. CIM is Computer Integrated Manufacturing. Or a student could drop into a building trades curriculum 
um, in 10th and 11th or 11th and 12th grades, or a student could pursue what would be maybe stereotypically more aligned with uh, preparatory experience to go to engineering school after high school, um, advanced placement physics and calculus, or a combination of more than simply four classes. So students could, a student could take building trades one and two, but also take advanced placement physics and calculus if civil engineering was um, an area that, that was of uh, distinct interest to them. So again, we're trying to build um, student choice within the pathways to tailor to where students see themselves going post high school. Coding, gaming, and robotics. Um, ninth grade, we've got a couple of options and, and we may add to this, but again, intro to engineering um, or computer integrated information systems where there's some um, intro to, to coding and programming are good places to start. And then students will really go into an engineering and robotics type of pathway a gaming pathway um, or, or a programming coding pathway, but we certainly will allow students to meander through those areas of interest. Hopefully there's enough overlap that students can do that. Math is a pure math program or pure math pathway. We anticipate students in that pathway um, arriving at Gainesville High School in ninth grade, at least having studied high school algebra one in eighth grade. Some students will have studied algebra one and geometry, um, and then we'll simply continue students on with their math sequence after that. Um, we may offer an opportunity for these students to double up and take two math in a single year so that we can get students at the very least to uh, an advanced placement calculus course by the senior year, um, but hopefully beyond calculus. So linear algebra, and multivariable calculus are the two courses that we hope to offer to students as their um, advanced math options in their senior year, um, in addition to statistics or, or even uh, computer science course. Biomedical science is another transfer program, and um, ultimately, students in this pathway will start in the Project Lead the Way curriculum. Uh, in ninth grade in Principles of Biomedical Science. Uh, it's another good survey. It starts with a crime scene investigation trying to determine cause of death through blood typing and ELISA um, assay, um, and then looking at um, uh, other more natural causes of death um, to do with heart disease and, and other body systems. Um, in 10th grade, obviously, human body systems is one of the courses. Uh, that students can drop into. And then 11th and 12th grade, students can really uh, diverge into one of a number of courses from um, DNA and um, biotechnology to medical interventions, the Project Lead the Way course, advanced placement science curricula. Um, we'll have uh, a forensics class that will come online in a year's time, and that may be part of that pathway too. Uh, global ecology, uh, we're going to add environmental science as a potential ninth grade class, and then obviously follow a curriculum that really focuses on um, global ecology. Um, human geography at, at the 12th grade level could move back into 11th grade or even 10th grade, but that's a great course for understanding um, elements of, of geography and, and the impact of, of humans on the, eco on the ecosystems that, that we share. And then the science pathway obviously is a more pure science pathway through the curriculum. So that would involve six science classes through high school. Uh, criminal justice pathway, um, we'll offer criminal justice one and two. And then we'll try to augment that with sociology, uh, potentially a forensics class. Um, Project Lead the Way does tie to some pursuits of forensics and, and then tie that back to criminal criminal justice. So um, I think we'll, we'll easily be able to offer students four courses within a concentration in the criminal justice pathway. And then the history and political science pathway is more of a pure social science pathway where students will be asked to study six classes within the concentration. And this list is not inclusive of every single course option. It just gives a, a few examples at each grade level that students could, uh, could select. 
And then the question of what, what if those pathways don't meet my needs? Well, we're excited to build out a health and fitness pathway where students could take four years of health, uh, PE, personal fitness, uh, nutritional wellness coursework. So we've, we've put that in there as a kind of an independent study pathway. Business and marketing, there are any number of combinations of uh, courses that students could, could uh, pursue as they progress through that curriculum. Or we'll challenge students to come up with their own concentration. If we haven't built it out through this list, which is fairly extensive already, um, we want students to have meaningful conversations with their counselors, with their teachers, about what their interests are and how they can build and customize a pathway that, that meets their needs and interests. If we haven't done it in these previous slides, what could that look like? And, and I'm guessing over time we will add pathways, modify pathways, maybe even delete pathways based on what we learn from our students and our students' interests. So this is going to be a fairly organic um, specialty program. It's going to change from year to year. Um, the goal being to include every student and try and meet the needs of our students as they progress through high school. Okay, let's move on to the application process for students who are transfer students to, to Gainesville High School. Every student who is zoned to Gainesville High School um, will immediately be rezoned to us. Um, those families should be getting a letter on Friday, just acknowledging that they have, their students have been rezoned to Gainesville High School. Um, and ninth and 10th grade students are automatically rezoned. And then the 11th grade students will have a second letter or a second email sent to them with a survey asking them to make a one-time choice. And that email will go out on December 4th. The one-time choice survey for 11th graders will go out on December 4th. So students who are not in that group, who are not zoned to Gainesville High School, this is the application process for you. We will be lotterying if we're oversubscribed for those 30 to 50 um, um, student placements by ninth and then 10th grade. The application deadline is February 1. It's the same common application through the Principal and County Schools Specialty Programs webpage. It's an on online application. Simply complete that application in full and every eligible student to join one of our pathways uh, as a transfer student will, will be dropped into a lottery and we will randomly select from those um, eligible students who apply. Uh, by about February 15th, the students who are selected from that lottery will be uh, notified of their selection. They will be invited to accept an offer of placement at Gainesville High School. And then we'll keep a waiting list. Um, if students were selected, um, let's say we select 30 students, the 31st, 32nd, 33rd, 34th students will be um, kept on file and then we will we will select students from that wait list if a student for um, any number of reasons chooses not to attend Gainesville High School as a transfer. And that's the location of um, future information. Um, I guess I can take that first bullet down now. We're past November 1. Our website is live. We're slowly building content, but we shared our, our URL, uh, the gainesvillehs.pwcs.edu uh, URL will take you to our website. Um, we do have specialty program information on that page, uh, so we invite you to visit that. Uh, we have begun the hiring process and um, over the, the next two to three weeks, as we hire our department chairs and some lead staff members, we will introduce them through our, our webpage. And then we're also excited to introduce staff that will be part of our community via Twitter. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Gainesville HS. And again, in the coming uh, next few days, we'll start to introduce our instructional technology coach um, our current technical education department chair. Um, we're about to select the science department chair. Uh, we will announce our band director, um, our school counseling lead, uh, an assistant principal that we've hired, Andrew Barton, 
and then some of our um, secretarial staff, Carol Dunlow, came on board this week as uh, an executive secretary and uh, Karen Basala, our bookkeeper. So we're excited to help get you know, get help you to get to know um, the team as the team grows. Uh, I'll say thanks to all of the students who've helped us so far, uh, designing athletic uniforms, uh, designing our, our mascot, choosing our mascot and our, our logos. Um, we'll be sending out more surveys for input. There's a survey on Twitter asking you which of our logos you'd like to see in the center of our gym floor when that is painted and designed. Um, and parents were going to be asking for input on uh, various parent leadership roles and um, areas of focus for the school. When we hit the, the late winter and early spring, we will be um, starting to develop our, our mission and vision statements and engage students who want to be student leaders from the, from the onset. So we're going to get a team of people on board. And then uh, as we move into 2021, start to re-engage the community to, to try and get more input and uh, ideas as to how the school can successfully open and serve our community to the best of our ability. So um, at this point, that's, um, that's all we have for this evening. We are going to replicate a version of this webinar on January 13th. Um, so we're going to sift through the chat from today. Um, we'll try to develop an FAQ page for our specialty program. Um, if there are other pieces of information that we must include in the January replica of this webinar, then we'll, we'll certainly take that feedback and use it as best we can. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and we'll find a way of linking the recording to our webpage through the, the specialty program section of our webpage. And I would imagine that will be available in a few days time. Uh, by Monday, we, we anticipate that being up and loaded on the webpage. Um, so at this time, I'm going to sign off. Again, I'll say thanks everybody for joining us. I'm um, really excited to uh, continue the planning that we're doing, um, get our staff on board, involve our, our students continuously in various decisions that we're making, and um, really looking forward to the 2021-22 school year where all of the, the ideas that we have become reality. So again, thanks for being here, and please feel free to be in touch if, uh, if I can be of any assistance.